giving all the honor, praise, and glory to the Most High, our power. And I thank you, Father, for Yeshua Christ, our oil, and for shedding his precious blood for us. I also would like to thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, our Mother, who leads, guides, counsels, and comforts us. The Narrow Way What is the definition of narrow, Brother Kyle? Limited in extent, amount, or scope, restricted, or especially of something that is considerably longer or higher than it is wide, of small width. You see, when we were in the world, oh, when we were in the world, we did things in a broad manner and in a wide way. Or what do they say now? He or she did it big in a major way. Parties after parties, clubs after clubs, cities, oh yes, cities after cities. Everything seemed to be fine, at least the thought of it was. Churches, groups, or shall I say small groups or factions organized in such a way, if you don't look like them, or shall I say act like them, you're not getting in with them. Oh, and those fancy dresses and suits that you just can't wait to wear. You know, those outfits that will have you turning your nose up to your brother and sister that would come down during altar call. Just being biased. Oh, but no, you will say, no, 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 I'm not being biased. Look at them, they're filthy and they stink. Besides, I worked hard for this. They can go to work, too. Okay, okay, okay. What is the definition of broad, Brother Kyle? Covering a large number and wide scope of subjects or areas, or having an ample distance from side to side, wide. Yes, the broad way makes you feel like you got it all covered, right? See, the problem of being accepted by the world makes one feel good, as if they have achieved some great thing, thinking you're leveling up, but in all actuality, you're spiraling down, as it all fades. My people perish for the lack of knowledge, or, shall I say, my people perish for the lack of information, ignorance. Recognitions of Clement, Book 5, Chapter 4 Ignorance, the Mother of Evils From all these things, therefore, it is concluded that all evil springs from ignorance. And ignorance herself, the mother of all evils, is sprung from carelessness and sloth, and is nourished and increased and rooted in the senses of men by negligence. And if anyone teach that she is to be put to flight, she is with difficulty and indignantly torn away as from an ancient and hereditary abode. And therefore we must labor for a little, that we may search out the presumptions of ignorance and cut them off by means of knowledge, especially in those who are preoccupied with some erroneous opinions by means of which ignorance is the more firmly rooted in them as under the appearance of a certain kind of knowledge for nothing is worse than for one to believe that he knows what he is ignorant of and to maintain that to be true which is false this is as if a drunk man should think himself to be sober and should act indeed in all respects as a drunk man, and yet think himself to be sober, and should wish to be called so by others. Thus, therefore, are those also who do not know what is true, yet hold some appearance of knowledge, and do many evil things as if they were good, and hasten destruction as if it were to 
salvation. And so, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be, which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Wise man will hear, and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So it is important to come in the narrow way, because broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now. For the narrow way of life, there is a brother who describes this very well articulated. Lactantius, briefly, Lactantius was very active in Roman government. Nevertheless, he was converted around 303 AD and left his office for fear of persecution underneath the rulership of Diocletian. His writings one should not overlook because he was probably one of the last major Christian writers before the Council of Nicaea. The fathers, historians, and other writers of the church. Lactatius. Concerning the paths of life, concerning the pleasures, and also concerning the disadvantages of Christians. There is therefore one way of virtue and of the good which leads not to the Elysian fields or heavenly fields as the poets say but to the very citadel or a fortress typically on high ground of the universe. But the path to the left inflicts the punishments of the wicked and sends downwards to impious Tartarus. And I shall read, For it is the path of that culminator who, by instituting perverse forms of religion, turns away men from the heavenly path, and leads them into the path of perdition, the appearance and figure of which path is so ordered in aspect that it appears to be level and open and delightful with every kind of flowers and of fruits for in it are placed all things which are taken for good upon the earth i mean opulence honor pleasure all seductions but equally with those injustice cruelty pride perfidy lust cupidity discord ignorance, falsehood, folly, and the other vices, but the issue from that way is such as I shall describe. 
when one shall have received the extremity from which it is now allowed to return, the path with all its beauty is so suddenly cut off that no one can detect the imposture before having been precipitated. He falls to a profound depth for whoever caught by the semblance of honors and altogether engage in acquiring them shall not have foreseen those things which are to ensue after death and shall have turned himself away from God. He indeed driven down into hell shall be condemned to everlasting punishment. But that other heavenly way has been set before us as difficult and rocky, either rough with bristling thorns or interrupted by projecting cliffs, so that each one must ascend with the utmost labor and wear of the feet and with the greatest anxiety about falling. Upon this path has he placed justice, temperance, faith, patience, chastity, abstinence, concord, knowledge, truth, wisdom, and the other virtues. But along with those, poverty, ignominy, labor, grief, and all kinds of bitterness, for whosoever shall have stretched his hope further forward and shall have preferred the better things will do without these advantages of the earth in order that unencumbered a light he may overcome the difficulty of the way for neither can he who shall have surrounded himself with royal array or loaded himself with riches enter upon or continue in those defiles Whence it is understood that for this reason it is easier that the things which they desire should succeed for the wicked and the unjust, because their way is level and sloping. But the things which the good wish for should proceed with difficulty, because they advance by a difficult and steep path. The just man, therefore, since he has entered upon the hard and rough way, must necessarily be a subject of contempt, derision, and hatred. For all they whom cupidity or pleasure drawn headlong envy him who has been able to embrace virtue, and are displeased that anyone should have that which they have not themselves. He, therefore, will be poor, ignoble, humble, exposed to injury, and nevertheless preferring all things that are better. And if he shall have brought along his continual patience to that highest degree and end, the crown of virtue will be given to him, and he will be gifted by God with immortality, by reason of the labors which he will have endured for justice sake. Those are the paths which God has assigned to the human life, in each of which he shows good and bad things. But in an inverted and converse order, for in the one path he has shown us temporal evils, in the first instance with everlasting advantages, which is the better order, and the other path he has shown to us temporal advantage, in the first interest with eternal evils, which is the worse order, so that whosoever shall have chosen present evils along with justice must obtain greater and more certain advantages than those which he contemned, whereas whoever shall have preferred present advantages to justice must fall into greater and more lengthened evils than were those which he fled from. For, because this corporal life is short, by the same reason must its evils and advantages necessarily be short. But inasmuch as the spiritual life which is opposite to this earthly life, is eternal. By the same reason its evils and advantages are also eternal. Thus, it happens that everlasting evils succeed short advantages, and everlasting advantages succeed short evils. Therefore, when both good and evil things are laid before man, it becomes him to consider within himself,
How much better is it to balance short-lived evils with perpetual advantages than to endure perpetual evils for short and failing advantages? For as in this world, when a contest is proposed with an enemy, thou must undergo labor in the first instance, in order that afterwards thou mayest be in peace. Thou must suffer hunger, thou must suffer thirst, heat and cold are to be born. Thou must lie upon the ground, thou must watch, thou must encounter danger, in order that, thy pledges being safe, thou mayest enjoy thy house and thy property and all the advantages of peace and victory. But if thou prefer present quietness rather than labor, thou must necessarily do thyself the greatest injury, for the enemy will be beforehand with the resisting. Thy fields will be laid waste, thy house will be plundered, thy wife and children will be part of the booty, and thou thyself will be killed or will be taken. In order that all which things may not happen, thy present advantages must be put off. In order that a greater and a longer one be procured for thee, thus in all this life, because God has reserved an adversary for us, in order that we may lay hold upon virtue, present pleasures is to be relinquished, lest the enemy brings us under. We must watch, we must keep our posts, we must perform our military expeditions. Our blood must finally be shed. In a word, all things bitter and heavy must be patiently borne. The more readily on this account, because God, our General, has appointed eternal rewards for our labors. And since men exhaust so much labor in this earthly warfare, that they may procure for themselves things which may perish in the same way in which they have been procured. Certainly no labor shall be refused by us, by whom that is acquired which can by no means be lost. For God, who created men for this warfare, will that they should be unencumbered in the ranks, and that they should watch with minds acutely intent against either the snares or the open attacks of a single enemy, who Cruel as he is, catches us according to the nature and disposition of each, as skillful and practiced generals are accustomed to do. For he infuses into some an insatiable covetousness, in order that he may fling them out of the right way, tied up by their own riches, as it were, with fetters. Others he inflames with the goads of wrath, that he may turn them away from the contemplation of God, being intent rather upon hurting their fellow men. Others, he plunges in immoderate lust, in order that, being slaves to pleasure out to the body, they may not be able to look back upon virtue. But he breathes envy into others, in order that they themselves, being occupied with their own torments, may think of nothing but the happiness of those whom they hate. Some he inflates with various kinds of ambition. Those are they who apply all the labor and care of their lives to the exercise of majesties in order that they may sign the fasti, that's a calendar or chronological base list, and give their own names to their year of office. The cupidity of some tends higher, still, not merely that they may govern provinces with the temporal sword, but that they wish they should be called lords of the entire human race, by reason of their boundless and perpetual power. But he involves in various forms of religion, those whom he sees pious, in order that he may be able to make them impious. But he drives philosophy into the eyes of those who seek wisdom, in order that he may blind them by the appearance of light, lest any comprehend and hold the truth. Thus, 
rejoicing in the public errors, he has obstructed all the avenues of salvation, and beset all the paths, which errors that we may be able to dispel, and to vanquish the author of evil himself. God has enlightened us, and armed us with the true heavenly virtue, concerning which I have now to discourse. In conclusion, narrow is the way to eternal life, but broad and wide is the way to destruction. Blessings and peace. There is more.